of ongoing work with uh, an engineering company from Portugal, which uh, focuses mainly on electrical power transformers. And this is the outline of my presentation. I'll try to go over the following statement, then go over some of the methodology I've employed and some results for different components that were chosen to be uh, analyzed um, in the power transformer, and then some conclusions which were. So, uh, in order to uh, continue moving forward to a more uh, uh, green and uh, um, circular uh, power, power grid, we really need to take care of the infrastructure. And one of these critical infrastructures are power transformers. Power transformers currently, uh, in the majority, use uh, mineral, mineral oil as a dielectric fluid and, uh, and as a cooling fluid. Uh, and in order to transition to to, to uh, greener solutions, uh, the, the employment of ester uh, as a fluid is interesting. However, it's technically challenging as it will affect the the, the, the performance of this of these equipments. These equipments, although they are they seem quite static, they actually have uh, significant loads uh, during service and manufacturing. And most important ones for, for the design, uh, it's normally the, the loads due to short circuits. Uh, beyond the question of biodegradability, there's also a question of, of safety and uh, operating conditions, as ester, uh, the use of ester also has these benefits of um, enabling it to be uh, more uh, fire safe. Uh, and can be can lead to to the transformers being employed in, in different uh, conditions that are not uh, currently um, allowed. Uh, so for this presentation, I'll focus mainly on two of the components: the, the insulating uh, components, which will be as, uh, immersed in different dielectric fluids, and the, the uh, continuous transpose conductors. Uh, for the insulators, we tested both in uh, metal and insulators and extra hard uh, press boards, which are uh, uh, let's say more uh, uh, old school or more common, uh, in two different thicknesses, and we tested with different impregnations the current standard of mineral oil and also ester, and both in uh, a new condition and the age condition. The aging was done through. Um, uh, Submitting the, the, the insulators to a higher uh, higher temperature and measuring the degree of polarization until it was found out that it was similar to what uh, a power transformer will have after I think it's 50 years of service. And we tested it to different temperature conditions, although we will also test the higher temperatures. Um, we set we made our own uh, equipment and setup do this kind of test, which basically uh, is a, a small uh, uniaxial um, uh, machine that we developed and we perform compressive loads, there's some, some, some guiding and so on, this is for room temperature, for, for uh, cold temperatures we use the solution based on um, uh, uh, on some uh, in the course, I'm, I'm having a blank, but uh, and basically the, how these tests work is that we submit the, 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 these components to a series of loadings uh, which the, it has to, to, to stay for some time at that, that loading, so the load zero is a reference load and uh, the, the, the in-service load and then back to the, the reference load and from this we will get uh, the, the, the uh, height of the stack of the, the, the specimens and we can make some easy calculations regarding the compressibility of these insulators and how much of that compressibility is residual or reversible. Uh, so from the, for that we will, we will get some uh, load uh, displacement curves and we can again through those calculations get the, these, these more easy comparisons. So if we look here for example for the the case of, of compression, we have the press boards and the, the, the Nomex, so the, the um, metal uh, uh, material. What we can find is that this one is much more stable than, than the other ones, and that's the, 
the lower thickness of press board is uh, more susceptible to, to the impregnation oil uh, or medium uh, and this is uh, uh, possibly due to the, the question of having the um, let's say of, uh, small, small, smaller distances to the surface which is impregnated with the, 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 the medium and here we can see the, the comparisons in terms of, of Reverse, reversible compressibility. Uh, you can see here more clearly the difference between the, the Nomex and, and the other ones, uh, which ends up like uh, being more uh, uh, reversible due to the, the chemical characteristics of these of these components. Uh, basically, compressive re uh, reverse, uh, reversible compressibility ends up being the reverse of the residual, so uh, you can just the, the, the graphs for the residual compressibility are pretty much the opposite of these ones. For the conductors, they are composed of uh, some copper windings, which can be of different uh, grades of, of copper. They have in between them uh, an, an epoxy, which is supplied in a B stage, so this means that it's semi cured and then needs to be fully cured during manufacturing, and then it's uh, uh, covered by an insulating wrapping paper. The first thing that we had to, to characterize was how much, what was the bonding strength and how much it varied with, the, with the, the, the manufacturing conditions. For that we developed uh, a special apparatus which will uh, allow us to transfer uh, uh, tensile load into, into shear, so almost like a thick shear test, and we tested different curing conditions according to uh, three different uh, manufacturers uh, in order to, to, to compare. Uh, this is the, the setup, so basically when we will have um, axial uh, tensile load, we will end up having a, a, a shear only load in the compression without any, any bending. Uh, and this is the typical graph that we will get, some shear displacement curves. Uh, here uh, we have for three different um, uh, uh, curing conditions, uh, and this is the typical uh, fracture uh, of the, the of the specimen. So it just breaks through the, the desired uh, bonding surfaces, and you can see the the, the B stage epoxy, which is uh, uh, fell which fell through an easy failure. And if we see the comparison, what we find is that. Uh, as expected, with increasing temperature, we have a higher degree of cross polarization, so there is more, uh, more, more, more strength. But some of the the of the the, the, the supplied um, materials will heat their uh, maximum strength before the 120 degree curing condition. This is because there is no more uh, possibility of uh, generating more cross linking, and therefore there's the higher temperature will not result in, in, in further, further strength. Finally, we had to test the full conductor. For that, we, we, we developed um, uh, an apparatus capable of simulating the, the in-service conditions of these conductors. And we had to test them in, in different uh, temperature conditions. Uh, given the, the, the size of this, is almost two meters. Uh, it was a little bit challenging, but we, we, we designed uh, some apparatus here. You can see how it is uh, set up. It is to imitate the, how they are set, uh, set up on the conductor because we have a series of, of these uh, CPCs which will limit the, the movement on one of the directions. Uh, and the heating, uh, we have some insulation and the heating was done through a heat gun and controlled through a PID control. And, and the type of curves that we get here is it basically allows us to get the, the, the buckling strength and here is the configuration of, of, of the load with compressive load and we have some supports on, on one side just on some point just to show that this is the, the buckling length and the, the on the uh, perpendicular side it's fully fully supported and, and what, what we get is that uh, we find that of course temperature has a big effect and the more worryingly is that for these extreme uh, temperatures, basically the, the conductor will become almost like, let's say, like butter. 
but uh, I have to remark that uh, although these temperatures can be uh, hit during uh, short circuits, normally it's very fast uh, heating uh, events, so the the conductor is not subjected for very for a very long time to these uh, high temperatures. So uh, we then opted out to do more tests uh, in the intermediate uh, temperature just to, to make sure of what was the, the uh, effect of the temperature in the buckling in the buckling So um, to conclude, we developed a series of equipments and, uh, and methods to uh, uh, assess the different components of the electrical power transformers. Uh, regarding the, the bus boards and the, and the insulating materials, we found that the meta uh, uh had lower compressibility uh, and a more reversible part of that compressibility. Uh, regarding the, 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 the conductors, uh, regardless of the, uh, the, uh, any of, of them, the, of course, uh, the higher the curing temperature results in better performance uh, uh, and uh, back of, back of performance was uh, highly sub subjected, highly sensitive to, to the temperature. The only thing left is to Acknowledge the funding for, for all of these uh, experimental campaigns that's still ongoing. That is all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, do you have any comments, any questions that you would like to, to put to the presenter, the speaker? Okay, thank you very much for your presentation. So the next speaker will be Daniel Cid.